Hi everybody, I'm Jill Woodward. I'm a registered dietitian and TRIO's corporate wellness specialist, and you are in my kitchen. Um, today, because it's the beginning of fall, we're going to be making a apple recipe for dessert. So a lot of times dessert gets a bad rap, especially this time of year when we really are focused on food events and holiday type things, right? We have Halloween coming up with candy. We have lots of other sweet treats that we think of this time of year. So we're gonna take an apple, which is a seasonal produce for this time of year, and we're going to turn it into a delicious and healthful dessert. So first, today I'm gonna go through the ingredients and talk a little bit about the recipe, and then we'll jump in and get going. So we have apples. I actually have um, a local apple, it's called a John Mac. So it's local to here in Wisconsin, works really great for this recipe. You could also use a Honeycrisp or a Gala apple, whichever kind you have. You could also even use Granny Smith if you like that tart flavor. I also have here a cup of old fashioned oats. So these are just regular old fashioned rolled oats, nothing crazy, um, but you don't want the steel cut because they won't cook fast enough for this recipe. I also have about four tablespoons of melted butter. And then in here, I have about one tablespoon of brown sugar. And I also have um, a mixture of cinnamon and uh, ginger. So I actually used a pumpkin pie spice for this, sort of a secret ingredient, because if you're not familiar, pumpkin pie spice is actually a blend of a couple of different um, flavors. So I put them in this because it's really going to bring out that fall flavor. So we're focusing more on those cinnamon, nutmeg, clove type flavors for this recipe that really makes it feel fall. And it actually has a lot less of the added sugar. Um, the we have obviously the tablespoon of brown sugar here, but it's just one tablespoon for the whole recipe. So that's really great because we're really minimizing the amount of added sugars that we have. So then we're gonna make um, a topping for the apples and we're also gonna make a top a crispy crumble for that. So if we are going to cut these apples in a way called a blooming apple or sort of an apple blossom. So I'm going to take my apple and I'm going to turn it into um, what would maybe look like a blooming apple or sort of that blooming onion, onion effect. So I first I'm going to peel my apple. Now you don't have to do this step if you don't want to. Um, I like to because it's going to make that apple really soft in your dessert. Now, a lot of people um, prefer to keep the peel on and I'll, you know, obviously there's a lot of great fiber in there and there's a lot of great nutrients in the peel. The coloration is giving you a lot of antioxidants. So it's actually quite wonderful to keep the peel on there. Um, but I'm gonna change it up a little bit for this recipe only because I know who's eating it. <laughs> so we're gonna make it um, a little bit different. So please keep the peel on if you prefer. It becomes very soft in the recipe, so it's not a big deal. I'm using a basic carrot peeler, and that made that peeling process really simple. So if you are peeling, just go ahead and take your carrot peeler, peeler and then pull it towards yourself in a circular motion, and just go all around your apple. And then it's gonna make these awesome little rings, um, which keeps it, it makes it easier to cut the apple, obviously. All right, I'm gonna just go halfway down on this one actually, because I do want some amount of peel in mine. So then I'll just take my scraps and toss it in the trash. And now we're gonna do the blooming part. So this is a little bit tricky. I want to make two flat sides on my apple first. So I have a large chef's knife, and I'm gonna cut just a small portion of the bottom off to make sure the apple stands flat in the cooking dish. So I will scoop this over. And I'll just cut, curl my fingers, hold my knife safely with the blade, and I'm going to take just a really small amount off the bottom of the apple. I took out those uneven little bump parts, so now it stands firm. I'm also going to do the, the same thing to the top so it's easier to take the core out when we get to that step. So I'll do that with both of my apples. Now this recipe calls for about four to six apples, so you are welcome to do as many or as few as you want. Um, really make this your own and use it however, um, you know, adapt it for however many people you're serving it for, obviously. So I just have these tops and bottoms. I'm gonna go ahead and toss those. Set my knife to the side. Now, for
for the blooming, the next blooming part, I'm actually going to use a melon baller. I have a two-sized two melon baller. I have large and small. I'm going to use the small side for this. And I'll take a small paring knife for this one as well. So I'm just going to make a tiny cut around the core so that I can start that melon baller as close to the core as possible. What you don't want is to remove a big portion of that flesh of the apple because that's obviously what we're cooking and eating. So we don't want to do that. So I just made a tiny sort of pre-cut, if you will. And then I'm going to use my melon baller really carefully, that small side, and I'm going to take out the core. So what you're trying to do is scoop out the seeds from inside the apple. Without removing too much of that outer layer. And you don't want to go too deep, obviously, because you don't want to punch through the bottom of your apple, but you're just trying to get all those seeds out. There we go. Okay, so I have these little portions of seeds that I'm going to just leave to the side. And now you can see I have a nice just open hole inside my apple. So I'll do that with all of the apples. So I have two today. You guys may have more. But be very careful with your knife. Kind of do that little pre-cut. Helps you start with the melon baller a little bit easier. And then we're just going to scoop out that inner core. couple of quick scoops and we have it all done. There we go. All right, toss these guys. Now we're going to slice around the outside of the apple so that we have sort of um, pieces that will fold open as it cooks. Obviously it's not going to fold open a ton, but if you cut it pretty well, it will open up like a booming onion. So you're going to take your knife and make a circular cut around the inside of that thick part of the flesh. Be really careful. You're not just going to be able to like swoop through unless you have a crazy sharp knife. But I would just do a few cuts at a time. Go about three quarters of the way down into the flesh of the apple. And you're going to cut all the way around. You kind of want to make two layers of pieces that are going to fold open, obviously. So there we go. All right. And now you're going to score the outside of this. You actually do want to cut through enough for those pieces to open up. So I'm going to use my knife. I'm going to take it through the flesh again, about three fourths of the way down and make that slice. And I'll go around sort of making one inch portions or mini cuts throughout the apple. Now, again, don't go all the way to the bottom. You want it to open up in the oven as you cook. There we go. Perfect. So now that one's ready and you can place that in a baking dish. So we'll do the same thing with all the apples that we have. So again, three quarters of the way through. Keep it simple. Having those flat sides really helps your apple from flying around or rolling around too much on your cutting board. So we got all these, here we go, almost, perfect. And then score through about three fourths of the way down. And I am cutting all the way through, you can see my knife coming through the center of the apple. I want to make sure that those pieces sort of bloom open in the oven. That's the blossom effect. There we go. All right. Once you have it all cut, there we go. You can place them in your baking dish. Now you can grease the bottom of your baking dish if you'd like, but you're going to be adding a little bit of water or apple cider. So you don't necessarily need to do that. So I have my baking dish and my apples prepared. And now I'm going to add my butter and my little bit of sugar and my little bit of pumpkin pie spice, or if you just wanted to do cinnamon and nutmeg, that's perfectly fine. So I'm going to add this to my butter, mix that around. There we go, kind of make a nice drizzle for the apple itself. I love this as a dessert option for your holiday table. It's an awesome look. It is a single portion, obviously, so you it's easy to serve when you have a lot of guests because you could each have your own apple. You can serve it with um, 
you know, homemade whipped cream, you can serve it with ice cream, you can serve it with really anything that you want. Um, so we have our drizzle and our apple. So I'm just going to go ahead and pour this mixture into the center of each of these apples in those holes, right? So I'm just going to put that in there. I'm going to get it all the way in those apples. And then whatever extra you have, you can just drizzle on the top. There we go. Awesome. So that is prepared, and now we're going to make the topping. So again, my cup of rolled oats. I have a little bit of melted coconut oil and a little bit of maple syrup. So I'm going to put that right in, drizzle that onto my oats. And this is going to make sort of that crunchy topping to go on top. Now, a lot of um, toppings, these types of toppings, would have a lot of butter in them. And so we're actually substituting that coconut oil for the butter, and we're using um, a little bit of maple syrup again to bring in some sweetness and to bring it all together, give us some of that moisture. So this is also a teaspoon of pumpkin pie spice. Again, I just substituted because I thought it would be a really nice fall flavor um, and does cut down on the number of different ingredients you need to have. So you can use a combination if you already have clove and um, nutmeg and things like that, you can definitely just make your own. All right, so the, and then I also added um, about a half a cup of chopped walnuts to this. Walnuts are an awesome addition. I'm getting tons of great omega-3s. I'm getting good fiber, healthy fats, all kinds of great antioxidants. It's an awesome addition to this dish and makes a really nice um, crunch too. And when they're heated up, mm, just so good. Okay, so then I mix all of this together with my rolled oats. So this topping is tons of great antioxidants. We have lots of good fiber with the oats. This is definitely a really um, good, healthy option to add to the top of this dessert. So now that I have my topping ready, I'm just gonna go ahead and put it on top of the apples. So I will use my hands a little bit and get that all on top of there. So you want, um, you know, I probably have too few apples for the amount of topping, but that's no problem because I really love this crunch. So I'm going to try to use it all. But obviously, if you had four to six apples, this would be the perfect amount for you. Awesome. So it's looking delicious. And it's okay if you have some that's kind of falling off the apple, no problem. All right. So I've made really good little crunchy toppings for these apples. That's going to be so good. All right. Now it's ready for the oven. So I would bake it. Um, first, I'm going to add a little bit of water. You want the steam to help soften the apples. I just have water, but you can use apple cider. That definitely brings out more of that fall flavor. Super awesome addition to your holiday table. I'm going to fill this up maybe about a third of the way, just to bring out that steam, soften the bottom, so I have all that together. All right, and there you have it. It's ready for the oven. I'm going to bake this at 400 degrees, and I'll do that for a little while, maybe about 10, 15 minutes. I'll check it, and then I might add um, some tin foil on top to keep things from burning, but also to allow the apples to really soften up and bloom open. So. Definitely uh, keep an eye on it in the oven and it will cook for roughly 30 minutes, but check it at 15 to make sure that you're not losing any of the, um, you're not burning the topping too much. All right, we're going to go toss this in the oven. I hope you enjoyed watching. I hope you make this for your um, fall this year and really bring out those flavors and great healthy options.